Ryzen 4000 is here. It's on its way. It's coming up. We're going to talk about it in this vlog because the AMD reveal is slated for this Thursday, October the 5th at 10 o'clock p.m. And the game ready driver has appeared to fix some of the issues that RTX 3080 users were running into. Let's talk about it. But if this is your first time to the channel and you want to learn more about building PCs and other gaming related stuff, click the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss a thing. What's happening YouTube and the internet? Terrence here, and we are back inside the lab. And to start off, I want to address that the 456.55 drivers are coming in. The reports are coming in from PC Mag and other um, publishers that the game ready drivers has fixed the crash to desktops and other instability issues RTX 3080 users were running into. And this is a good thing. I did talk about it in um, last week's vlog where I did a video based on the findings from Igor's lab. I will admit that it was pure speculation and that essentially is what I based that video off of. I wholeheartedly wanted the RTX 3080 to succeed. But we talked about that on this, this week's live stream and if you haven't seen it or you didn't catch it, we go live every Saturday and the times will vary but we go live every Saturday and I'll throw a link up to the replay card here so you can give it a watch after watching this video. And in that video, I, I did say that I hoped NVIDIA would release a game ready driver that would fix it because I am rooting for Ampere, right? Like I don't want to see the RTX 3080 or the 30 series fail in general. I think that healthy competition is still going to be good on NVIDIA side and on amd side and i don't want to see you know gamers experiencing these issues because at the end of the day i just want to see you play games too but it appears that the four five that's the four five four five six dot five five game ready driver has fixed those stability issues it's come at a um it's come at a reduction of the maximum boost clock speeds by not it's not a lot especially from some of the reports that i've read the it's somewhere about like 100 100 megahertz that the boost clock speed has dropped by but apparently there there seems to be no significant drop in performance which is good i mean this is a really good thing while it's still very much hard to find an rtx 3080 unless you're willing to pay more than msrp which i don't recommend but if that's something you have the finances and the extra coin to do and you really want the graphics card you really want to upgrade like now you wait it you wait and you wait it and say you're on maybe a 9 series card or a 10 series card or maybe even older i did say i, I would have wanted an rtx 3080 for for my personal use i am maybe holding out myself for an RTX 3070, which Nvidia just recently announced in a blog post that they were pushing the launch of the RTX 3070 back to October 29th. That way that they can better accommodate gamers um, in terms of stock and availability. This is a good thing. The only thing I wanna point out is that Nvidia did this as a potential preemptive strike on AMD to steal their thunder because our DNA 2 is set to be announced on October 28th, a day before NVIDIA is going to make their RTX 3070s available. Um, I mean, this says that maybe NVIDIA is concerned about our DNA 2 or Big Navi. That remains to be seen. Either way, I think there's going to be, um, I think there's going to be some extreme value in the RTX 3070, especially with some recent reports coming out that the RTX 3070 is indeed faster than the RTX 2080 Ti. So it remains to be seen what high-end Big Navi looks like and low-end Big Navi looks like. Just know that AMD is set to announce their Zen 3 microarchitecture micro on the seven nanometer plus node and they're toting better, you know, better instructions per cycle, which is good because you know, instructions per cycle on top of clock speeds and cores is which is what really makes a chip fast. One area AMD has dedicated themselves to helping gamers save costs, and that is the compatibility with the AM4 socket and older chipsets like the X470 chipset and the B450 chipset. You will be able to drop a Zen 3 CPU 
onto those motherboards um, so long as the, you've updated the micro code to support the Zen 3 micro architecture. Um, 300 series users though will be left out so X370 and B300, you know, B350 motherboard users, you you are most likely should be ready to upgrade your motherboard at this point. You can use say a Zen Plus or a Zen 2 CPU, but if you want some of those new features and you know better memory support and PCIe 4.0, then chances are you may want to upgrade your motherboard now, especially with Asus recently announcing that they've completely refreshed their B450 motherboards for, and they're calling it B452, but these B450 motherboards are gonna come with better better memory support and they're also going to be able to support these zen 3 cpus on day one they're being made specifically for them and those motherboards will be available later on at the end of october and how much will these boards cost i'm going to imagine you know asus won't likely go past 160 dollars in my opinion they don't want to cannibalize their b550 motherboards which at that point, if there's like a twenty to thirty dollar difference in in price, you may want to ask yourself: Should I just upgrade to a B five fifty motherboard, or you know, a, a low end X five seventy motherboard? Go with a higher chipset for better memory support. I mean, you're going to have choices. You're going to have options. I know you. I know you hear me talk about this on live streams and here and videos. That it's one of the things I like the most about this hobby, or you know, just PC gaming in general. You have a wide range of options to choose from when it comes to wanting to build a system that's going to be able to you know handle all your needs in terms of gaming and productivity workloads because if you look at the pricing for zen 2 which finally started putting amd in like this position where they don't really want to be the value alternative anymore they want to offer premium higher end chips we saw that with the 3900x and the 3950x but if you look at more mainstream CPUs like the 3800X, that that dropped at, at an MSRP of about $399 at launch. And then the 3700X was about $329 at launch. And even with the 3600, that was a hundred and what $179 CPU at launch. I mean, you know, those CPUs were priced really lower than Intel's offering at you know at the time with their ninth generation and even now with their 10th generation which is still slightly higher priced than zen 2. at the time all we had was the 9900k the 8 core 16 thread cpu that was really the cpu that would have been the fastest say for gaming i mean it was pretty much within margin within 8700k but the 9900k had two extra cores and four more threads so it did help in other workloads beyond gaming and now will amd go that same route in their pricing scheme say will the 4800x or the 5700x whatever amd decides to call it will it be positioned somewhere between you know 399 dollars or will we start to see them creep over past the 400 dollars you know price point with say a 449 dollars a core cpu with higher you know with higher uh, clock speeds and better ipc and a lower power draw because they are refining that seven nanometer node and getting some really impressive gains so that puts me in a really interesting position as i myself am ready to upgrade to a new platform right now i have an 8700k on a asus maximus um, 11 hero z390 motherboard and I've either wanted to say upgrade to an X570, you know, a premium X570 motherboard and an upcoming Ryzen 4000 slash 5000. I'm not sure. I don't want to say it's going to be the Ryzen 4000. I'm not going to say it's going to be 5000. I really don't know. So I'll likely upgrade to either a 4800X or a 5800X, an 8-core CPU. It'd be nice if AMD introduced a 10-core SKU somewhere for the mainstream desktop that's not on the, their Threadripper platform but I seriously doubt it at this point. And as tempting as it was to pick up a new 10th generation Comet Lake CPU, I had my eyes set on the 10, the 10 core slash 20 thread CPU, but its availability is still a little iffy and it's still very much over $600. And I can't see myself 
you know, my workload doesn't necessarily call on for so many cores and threads just yet. I gain at a higher resolution, so I'm mostly GPU bound most of the time. So I have decided to wait for Rocket Lake, which is going to be a newer architecture since Skylake. On top of that, the new 500 series motherboards will have support for PCIe 4.0. The 400 series motherboards, the Z490 motherboards, do have support for PCI, PCIe 4.0, but Intel has yet to release a, you know, a, a, C, a CPU that has compliant 4.0 PCIe 4.0 input output. So that's something we're going to have to wait for the 500 series and that's why i decided to skip over the 10th generation and pick up a second hand 9900k that can be found now even new here at a micro center for about 349 dollars and about 20 30 dollars less on the used market shopping the used market is something we talk about a lot here on the channel because you can find hidden gems and value that other users have maybe exhausted and they're ready to upgrade, but there's still value, say for example, in a 9900K, an eight core 16 thread CPU that can hit 4.9 over five gigahertz on all cores and threads. It is a toasty chip, but with the right cooling solution, you can achieve those clock speeds. But Rocket Lake won't be available till sometime later in 2021. And given the recent climate of the world, that's even subject to change. So I'll either again upgrade from an 8700K to a 9900K. And that way I won't need to buy a new motherboard because I have a Z390 motherboard, a premium high-end Z390 motherboard too. And if not, I'll just platform hop over to an X570 motherboard and a new 8-core Zen 3 CPU. Again, either a 4800X or a 5700X. And if AMD gets bold and decides to surprise us with a 10-core mainstream desktop, I'll even have my eyes on that, depending on how much value it offers relative to Intel and its price scheme or its price point. That all remains to be seen, but either way, it's going to be an interesting fourth quarter coming up here to round out the rest of the year. But either way, I highly suspect we're going to see a lot of all AMD builds coming up here in the near future. And for more awesome PC gaming related content, watch the top playlist first and the bottom one next. Consider joining our community by tapping the round subscribe icon down there at the bottom. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and go. Thanks for giving this vlog a watch. I hope to catch you all in the next one. So until then, be easy.